Mark Kurlansky is a distinguished uh, nonfiction writer and journalist, the author of 25 best-selling uh, books, including his latest, Ready for a Brand New Beat, How Dancing in the Street Became the Anthem for a Change in America. Mark, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Uh, tell us about uh, the new book. Why did, you, um, why did you choose this one song to, uh, as the lens through which to, to, to view that time? Well, first of all, it's a remarkable song. I mean, it's one of the great R&B recordings ever mm -hmm. made, Motown, 1964. Um, it came out at one of the most politically charged moments in history. Uh -huh. You know, now that we've just had the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination, there's been a lot of writing about how the Kennedy assassination changed everything. Well, this is the year after the Kennedy assassination, and, and you know, everybody's a lot tougher and more cynical. And uh, um, this song came out in July, the end of July, 1964, uh, a few days before the official beginning of the Vietnam War. And um, during the summer of uh, Mississippi Freedom Summer, and mm -hmm, the newspapers mm -hmm. were still full of the search for the bodies of Cheney and Goodman and Schwarmer. And uh, um, it was the, the Goldwater Johnson election, which uh, is not thought about very much because it was a landslide for Johnson, mm -hmm. but it actually was one of the most important presidential elections. It completely reconfigured the Republican and Democratic parties. Um, and it was, uh, you know, the, the, the summer that uh, uh, the Mississippi Freedom Party broke with the uh, uh, Democratic Party because they wouldn't seat them after they'd given their blood to register voters in Mississippi. And it was when Insurrections began in, in, in black uh, uh, ghettos, in, in, in black cities. The first one happened a few weeks before this song came out. And um, they continue to happen, uh, you know, every summer. Everybody said, right, what's right. going to happen this summer? And in, in 1967, summer of 1967, there were 120 of them. And in a lot of these uh, uprisings, um, what were people singing? They were singing Dancing in the Street. Well, at least to the question, I mean, if a superficial uh, hearing of the song, it sounds like a call for unity through, through music. Yeah. Uh, but it's also viewed as a call for black riots, right? Well, if you think about what was going on, and you have this song, this, this strong black voice that says, calling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? Summer's here and the time is right for Dancing in the Street. I mean, what is that supposed to mean? And then it says they're dancing in Chicago, and starts listing all of these cities that have major volatile black communities. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was adapted by the black power movement. The black power movement also came into its own in the summer of 64. That was the summer that Malcolm X said, we will get our rights by any means necessary. In other words, not just nonviolence. And uh, this big break between Martin Luther King and Bayard Rustin and the, the old civil rights movement that was nonviolent and the new black power movement of H. Rap Brown and Stokely Carmichael. And these guys, uh, particularly H. Rap Brown, but all of them, uh, Amira Baraka, all of them used Dancing in the Street was kind of their, their anthem. They played it at all their rallies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it took on that meaning. Um, there's some question of whether the people who created the song intended that meaning, um, and which is a hard thing to get to the bottom of because there's a tradition in black music called masking, which is that you 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 have the, the, the sort of the nice happy song for the white people, <laughs> and then you have the darker political song uh, for the black people. And, uh, and were they different versions, or did they use coded language? No, it's, it's coded language. The mm -hmm. most famous example was in slave times, they used to sing this song called Follow the Drinking Gourd. And white people would hear slaves singing that song, and they'd think, oh, you know, happy Negroes getting drunk. <laughs> and uh, um, the drinking gourd was actually the Big Dipper. 
And if you're in the south, uh, mm. you, you can test it out here in Florida tonight. You look up in the sky at the Big Dipper, and what's it doing? It's pointing north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what the song was saying, go north to freedom. <laughs> so it, it became very much a part of black culture when you hear a song to listen for that other meaning. So if you're listening for that other meaning and you have all this stuff that's going on, um, uh, summer's here and the time is right for dancing in the street, <laughs> has this whole other <laughs> meaning. Uh, but also, you know, the song is so um, strong, so, so evocative, so stirring. Um, you can uh, use it for just about anything you want. You know, Laura uh, Nero sang it in 1972, Sarah Dash. Sarah Dash told me that she was absolutely um, convinced that this was a song about the emergence of uh, uh, feminism. Hmm. And there was somebody who reviewed the book in the Chicago Tribune, uh, told the story that he had had this history teacher who used to use the song to teach about the westward expansion of the United States. <laughs> and, you know, it, it could just, there, there, there was this movie, I don't know if you ever saw it, Sister Act Two. Uh -huh. uh, Whoopi Goldberg plays a, <clears throat> a nightclub singer who's hiding out as a nun in this Catholic school a in San Francisco, and she wants to raise money for the school glee club. She goes out on the street and she sings a pretty good imitation of Martha Reeves <laughs> doing uh -huh, dancing, uh -huh. in the, dancing in the Street. And everybody kicks in money for the Glee Club. Well, that's exactly what H. Rap Brown was doing with Black <laughs> Power. You know, that's what, this song, that's what this song can do. I have to ask a, a geeky music question. Um, do you think that um, the Rolling Stones were inspired by the song for when they did Street Fighting Man, which seems to quote uh, one of the lyrics? Uh, Yes, uh, I mean it does. It, uh, summer's here and the time is right. Yeah. For um, uh, fighting in the streets. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, it it, uh, it it absolutely does. And I mean, the Rolling Stones were, in general, very inspired by black R and B music. Right. American. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, the question is Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> because he. Uh, he also has that phrase uh, in a song, and uh, um, he seems to be, I had a long talk with his manager, John Landau, about this, and he <coughs> said, and John Landau is a big R&B fan. John, mm -hmm. John Landau said that he thought uh, Dancing in the Street was a, one of the rare examples of a perfect recording. Mm -hmm. But he said that Bruce, um, you know, he wasn't that influenced by that song. He was more influenced by the Rolling Stones song. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's how in music things go on, go on and on. There are, musically, it's very, the, the soundtrack is incredible. Um, uh, and uh, uh, as has been quoted a lot, you know, picked up a lot by other musicians, in, including uh, Rolling Stones. Uh, more serious question. Um, when the Kennedy assassination was being... Um, you know, reported and re-reported and, and valorized and everything a week or so ago. A friend of mine on Facebook said, why am I being bothered with something that happened 50 years ago? So I want to extend that question. Why do the things that happened then, I mean, we know about them, how important they were then, but why are they important to us today? Because they're who we are. They're, they're how we got here. Uh -huh. I mean, you can't really understand what's going on or what it's all about or what we're all about if you don't... Uh, if you don't see where it, where it came from, it's you know it, it's why I write history and you know, why I write um, uh, children's books. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I were both alive back then. Uh, did you feel an obligation to try to convey to younger people that just the excitement of those times, just the excitement of being alive with all the things well, that were happening? Well, I would like to convey with this book. You know, I mean, music was something really different that kids today don't experience. That it, music was. You know, they were changing times and changing music. And I mean, you, you, you listen to music today, like Adele, and it's basically 60s R&B. Right, right. But, you know, the, this stuff was, was revolutionary at the time. Brand and they, were, and they yeah. were talking about revolutionary issues. I mean, uh, rock and roll, which was bringing black R&B to white people. Right. Uh, it was all about integration. 
It was absolutely revolutionary, and that's why mm -hmm. so many people were angry about it. Nobody's angry about music now because they don't see it as standing for anything. Right, right. Mark Kalansky, his new book is Ready for a Brand New Beat, How Dancing in the Street Became the Anthem for a Change in America. Mark, thank you uh, for being with us today. Nice talking to you. Okay.